Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Marvel Crisis Protocol character question mark spotlight. This one's going to be a little different from a lot of the other videos in this series because we're not actually looking at a character today. We are taking a look at all six of the Infinity Stones in Marvel Crisis Protocol. We're going to be looking at all of them, what they're good for in different situations, who's allowed to equip them, and just kind of generally talking about, you know, which characters they're worth it on, which ones they're not, what sort of game plans you go for, and why you might want to bring a stone on some characters versus not on some others. So yeah, we're going to go through the stones one at a time and then uh, just kind of have a little chat about the different characters available to equip them. So starting things out, we're just going to go in the order that they appear here. So the first one on the list is the Mind Stone. This is a, uh, all of the stones will add one threat to the character who brings them, and they are only allowed on designated characters, so we will be going through the character lists for each stone. Um, but yeah, so the Mind Stone is going to be adding one threat to whichever character has it equipped, and it gives you an active superpower called the Mind Gem. The superpower will cost you two power, and it says choose an enemy character within range three and advance it small. This superpower may be used only once per turn. So right out the gate, we have probably one of the stronger of the infinity gems here. Um, just having basically a, a bow to the will of Modok ability on a stick, uh, being able to equip this to anyone who can have the mind, zone, mind, mind stone, um, to, you know, make people walk away. That's great. Or walk towards you so you can punch them better. Really, really strong. Uh, yeah, just a really solid gem right out the gate. You can use this defensively. You can use this offensively. Um, uh, like all of the Infinity Stones, for those who haven't played with them before, uh, basically just having this equipped to your character means they'll be gaining an extra power during the power phase. So you're always going to have the two power needed to use this, although this does also work with leaderships like Steve Rogers, where when you use a superpower, the first superpower you use, rather, uh, reduces by one. It also, I believe, works with stuff like Professor Xavier, where uh, when you use a superpower, you get to pass the power to somebody else. So you can definitely work the stones into your game plans with those types of leaderships as well. So, yeah, really strong stone here starting out. Let's take a look at who is allowed to equip it. And the list here is Ebony Ma, Loki, and Thanos. Now, of course, Thanos is allowed to equip all of the gems. And yeah, I think the Mind Stone is great on all three of these models. I mean, the first one here is Ebony Ma, and he does kind of already have this effect in his attack here. So usually you're more likely to see him wielding the Space Stone instead because he's already got that effect in his own in his own kit whereas he's lacking any sort of mobility and we'll talk about the space stone more when we get there but um yeah between the two stones i mean he's allowed both of them they're both very very solid and it gives you some consistency with this or the ability to displace potentially up to three separate characters in the same turn which is really really strong he's got his incredible psychic potential here so he's already starting every round with three power the gem means he goes up to four power which gives him the ability to do his spender right out the gate. Now, this is true of either of the gems, but it also gives him the ability to use the Mind Stone, maybe make an attack and then get his spender a little bit more likely, or if not, the, the throw for three power. Um, really, really solid for him as well. So it's definitely a solid gem for him, although personally, I do lean more towards the Space Stone for him. The next one here is Loki. And Loki also really appreciates this gem. It's going to give him an extra power, which he does appreciate. He's also an Asgardian, so he's going to be getting three power if he has the gem equipped. So he's going to have the power to use it and then some. It also does put his Spender online and Trickster online every round, so that is really, really nice as well. And yeah, it's pretty solid. Loki is surprisingly short range with most of his attacks. So being able to bring things closer for your strike is definitely appreciated for him. Uh, and then of course, you, you know, you hope you have one more power. So maybe you do this round two or something like that. But you use, I am a god. So now you're counting blanks in your attack rolls and things like that. Really, really effective. A uh, great way of keeping characters close to, to be debuffed by your god of mischief superpower as well. Uh, so yeah, just all around really, really solid with him. Once again, it's another model where I'm a little bit more partial to the Space Stone, but we'll talk more about that when we get to the Space Stone. The last model allowed to equip the Mind Stone is, of course, Thanos. And there's kind of, there's three gems you see a lot on Thanos, and I think the Mind Stone is definitely one of them. If you're playing Thanos in Black Order, I think it's almost an auto-include for him. 
really, really powerful stone for Thanos to have. Gives him a lot of control between Cosmic Portal and that. You can drag a model halfway across the map for the rest of your team to absolutely destroy. Um, the Mind Stone combined with Cosmic Portal can oftentimes bring their model behind Thanos. So then when he uses his strike attack on them, he can throw them towards the rest of your team as well, which is really really strong so yeah super powerful gem on thanos definitely one of the ones worth strongly considering if you're playing thanos the next gem we're going to be taking a look at here is the power stone and this is probably the most simple to use gem in the game it is going to add a threat as usual and it just says during the power phase you gain two additional power instead of the normal one for having an infinity stone so a character who usually only gains one power will instead be gaining three power and yeah, this is a very straightforward effect, so let's go ahead and look at who is allowed to use it. And there's actually four characters that can have the Power Stone here. So we have Black Swan, Ronin the Accuser, Star-Lord, and Thanos the Mad Titan. So go ahead, we're going to look at Black Swan first, and Black Swan is a model who really appreciates this stone. Black Swan usually only gets one power, and this is the only stone that she's allowed to have. I do think she would be very strongly considering any of the others if she could have those instead. But because this is the only stone she's allowed to have, it does bring her up to a 5 threat, but it does a lot of great things for her kit here. So for Black Swan here, it's going to put your charge online round one and leave you with a power left over, which is important, and we are going to talk about that. Um, but yeah, having a charge online round one is already good. A lot of characters are brought under certain leaderships or with certain tactics cards just to make sure they can do their charge as early in the game as humanly possible. So this is already really, really strong. Her charge does come equipped with a size four small push. Uh, so that's also really really nice great way to push opponents off of secures and things like that as well Alternatively if you can't quite get in range to make a range to attack You can charge into an ivy attack because it does give you the one extra power You would need because of the power stone to be able to make this attack, which is also really really solid It's got an automatic incinerate on it and you're going to be piercing one of their results So that's great for her She really appreciates those things that the stone allows her to do It's also going to make it a little bit easier for her to use that leftover power to either use telepathic suggestion uh, to, to reroll your opponent's defense dice, uh, again, to try to push through extra damage, or this midnight field to give yourself a little bit of extra defensive help there, turning your opponent's wilds into blanks, which is really, really good. So yeah, Black Swan is a very, very power-hungry model and greatly appreciates this stone. The next model in the list here is Ronin the Accuser, and Ronin's an interesting one. Once again, he usually only gains one power per turn, so going up to three power per turn can be quite nice for him. A lot of the times, I find he tends to take the power stone when he is being run in Inhumans, because that makes him really, really good at passing power out to some of your allied characters, but it does also do some nice things for him as well. It makes it a little less costly to hand out judgment tokens, but the big thing is it's going to give you access to the spender a little bit more often. And the spender is quite good for Ronin. It's a 8 dice spender for only 4 power that's throwing out the stun and stagger conditions if it deals damage. So really, really solid spender that you do want to be able to have online a little bit more often. But I think the big reason why you're running the power gem with Ronin is for that Inhumans affiliation where you get to use Black Bolt's leadership to share your power with everybody else on your team. So having a model like Ronin who, for the most part, his kit is relatively cheap. You know, he has two zero-cost attacks that are reasonably solid. Uh, and then the Accuser is also a, a free ability here. So he doesn't spend too much power on the average turn, so he doesn't mind giving some of it away to characters that can use that power a little bit more. So... Definitely solid for him in, in humans. I think if you're running him somewhere like Guardians of the Galaxy, it's a little bit less valuable, but still definitely worth considering. The next one here is Star-Lord, and I've actually, I think I've talked about Star-Lord before in a kind of condition list sort of thing where I really like him with the Power Stone, because what the Power Stone does for him is it turns on full auto every round of the game, no matter how your other attacks have been going. And full auto is a really solid spender attack. It's going to be, to be giving out up to four different conditions based on the number of wilds you had in the attack roll. And it's a seven dice range four attack. So, I mean, it puts him up to a four threat, but that definitely has him hitting like a four threat pretty much every turn of the game. He's going to be throwing a seven dice followed by a five dicer. Obviously, he has to get up to range first, but it also makes hit and run a little bit easier to do more frequently as well, or even round one if you want to do something 
interesting with that. So yeah, it gives him a lot of options. I definitely do like it for him if you're running him uh, mostly out of affiliation, I find. Like if you're running him in Hydra where you're trying to do like a condition spam list or something like that, I think he could be really, really solid. Uh, as far as in affiliation goes, the strength of him being a three threat leader is really, really important. So unfortunately, a lot of the times I find he doesn't get the gem in his own affiliation, but it is a really interesting gem for him. The last one here is Thanos, and unfortunately, I think the Power Stone is probably not one of the best ones for Mr. Thanos here. Typically, I find Thanos is pretty good for power. Um, he does spend a reasonable amount, but because you're usually equipping him with two stones, he's already getting three power per turn. If one of those stones is the Power Stone, it does put him up to four power per turn, which is nice. It does give you a guaranteed... Uh, you know, Cosmic Portal and a Death Decree or something like that, which is certainly nice to have, but personally, I find it's not quite as valuable as what most of the other stones will do for him, so usually it doesn't quite make the cut, in my opinion. The next stone we're going to talk about is the Reality Stone, and this is probably one of the stronger gems once again. This is a one-threat stone, as usual, and it says when rolling dice as part of an attack, defense, dodge, or interact roll, this character treats one skull result as a critical result. And yeah, this is just really, really good. Um, characters like Domino or Malekith that have the ability to turn their skulls into criticals have really, really good dice math. Um, obviously they're allowed to do more than one of those dice, but it's still really, really solid on the characters that can have this. Now, unfortunately, the reality gem is limited to only a couple of models, both of which are exclusively Black Order affiliated, and the first one of those models is Corvus Glaive. And the Reality Stone is amazing on him. It does bring him up to a 5 threat, which is a little bit more expensive, so that's definitely something you have to consider. But with the Reality Stone combined with his Glaive's Edge ability to count blanks, he counts almost every side of the die except the shield as a success, or if he gets a second skull, that, that, that is a thing as well. But... It's extremely consistent, 7 out of 8 sides of the dice being a success, and that 8th side of the die giving you access to your flurry trigger uh, on the death blow is really, really good. So even when you're failing, unless you're rolling a, you know, a, a large amount of shields and more than one skull, um, you're doing pretty alright here. So... Yeah, it makes him hit like an absolute truck. It's also great for defensively being able to, you know, three dice with a damage reduction is fine, but three dice counting skulls or counting a skull as a crit with damage reduction is pretty solid. So yeah, definitely, uh, definitely some, some value to that for sure. Um, yeah, no, the reality gem is amazing on Corvus. The other thing it does give him is that extra power gives him access to Mothership round one, so you can do something like use Thanos to, to pull things closer, hopefully build two power on Thanos by punching something, and then have Corvus teleport in. So that does bring us to Thanos, and while Thanos does really appreciate the reality gem, if you're running him in Black Order, you definitely hold the reality gem for Corvus. Instead, Thanos probably takes one of the other stones to replace it, but um, outside of Black Order, where nobody else can be taking that reality gem slot, it is really, really powerful on Thanos. I find it's very, very common as a splash stone on Thanos. It makes his defenses feel really, really solid. Uh, 3 3 4 with a damage reduction to 0 is already pretty solid, but 3 3 4 counting a skull as a crit. Again, just really, really solid. It's, um, you know, 50% of your, your dice are going to turn up successful, and then 50% of those successes will be criticals. Really, really strong. Um, that's obviously not exact math because the second skull wouldn't be a crit, but for the purposes of this discussion, it's close enough. Um, so yeah, really, really good for that. Really good for his attacks as well. Helps him build power, helps him keep up with that kind of power economy. Definitely one of the reasons why you don't particularly love the power stone for him is because by giving him the reality stone he's probably doing one or even two extra damage throughout the course of every turn um and that means you've already made more power than the power stone would have given you so yeah the reality gem is just really really good on really anyone it's probably a good thing it can only be allowed on two characters in the game because i can think of a lot of characters that would have used that really really hard the next stone is the Soul Stone, and this one is interesting. In my opinion, it's a little underplayed, but I can kind of understand why 
The Soul Stone says when an enemy character within range 4 of this character uses a active or reactive superpower, this character gains one power after the effect is resolved. So this one can be a little awkward because it relies on your opponent giving you its effect for it to be useful, but in theory it can give you more power than the Power Stone would have, so there's definitely an argument between the two as to which one is better in certain cases for just having more power. The downside of it is because it is kind of in your opponent's control, a lot of the time they will intentionally play around this and deny you some of that extra power. So there will be a lot of times where you're really just paying that one threat for the one extra power the stone gives you by default, and maybe sometimes one extra here and there. So unfortunately, the soul stone often is considered one of the, the weakest stones because it can be played around by your opponent and... That's not great when you're paying a, a full threat for this effect. It doesn't quite do what it needs to do in a lot of cases. But there are a few characters who are able to use it, so we will briefly talk about them. The first one here is Doctor Strange, and I actually do think if you're going to equip Strange with a stone, you are probably better off picking the Soul Stone for him. Uh, the Soul Stone is nice for him in the sense that it does give him some extra power, which he definitely appreciates. Um, he doesn't have any, like, natural higher power than one, so starting out with two is solid. It gives him his defensive tech online all the time, which is really, really nice, and it does discourage your opponent from coming too close to him, which is also nice for him because he does tend to kind of fold relatively quickly when he is being attacked, so that's certainly nice for him. Uh, the only reason why I like it over the Time Stone is that he kind of already has the Time Stone baked into his own kit, and we're going to get there when we talk about the Time Stone, but um, yeah, I think between the two stones, it's definitely the better stone for him, although more often than not, I find most people prefer to run Doctor Strange without a stone just in general, so your mileage may vary, but um, yeah, I do think if you're going to give him a stone, the Soul Stone is probably the way to go for Mr. Strange here. The next character is Supergiant, and Supergiant I actually kind of like with the Soul Stone here. So she's a very interesting model, uh, generally unfortunately not considered very very good, but she can be super fun, and having extra power on her is definitely the way to go. Uh, so basically she has a bunch of things that A, require a fair bit of power, and B, uh, things that are just kind of annoying for your opponent to play around already. So she has Ethereal, so she can't really take more than one damage from physical attacks, which is already pretty solid for her. But then she also has this uh, Omnipathy, uh, or Omnipathy, I'm not sure how that's supposed to be pronounced. Uh, um, but basically it says when, when a character, an enemy character within three rolls any crits, uh, she's going to gain a power. So now you're, you're denying their attacks and you're denying their superpowers within three of you. Or not denying so much, but you're going to be benefiting from them. Um... So it's a nice little stack with that of just kind of ways of being like, yeah, so if you make an attack or if you use a superpower or God forbid you use a superpower that gives you an attack, uh, I'm going to be gaining power from all of these different things that you do within range of me. And then I'm going to be able to use that power to use some of my superpowers, which are actually pretty solid here. Things like Supreme Control uh, to deny pushes or, or throws in, or no, it's just pushes, um, to deny pushes. So if your opponent's playing like, I don't know, Gwen, and they're trying to webline a bunch of your models. Well, they use webline, and then you gain a power, and then you pay two power to say no webline. Obviously, this is, you know, still still net negative for you, but it's more negative for them because they paid two power, and you effectively only paid one, so it's definitely in your favor there. And then, of course, it does give you the spender more often, which, well, it's a little bit of a meme. You need a crazy amount of symbols here to get the good effect on the, on, on the spender here. Um does let you try it more often, and the more often you roll those dice, the more likely you are to get it, so, I mean, that's a thing. Um, yeah, I think Supergiant with the Soul Stone can definitely be interesting. Not sure about good, necessarily, but I think that's more a flaw of Supergiant than it is the Stone. The last one here is Thanos, and I think my opinion on Thanos with the Soul Stone is kind of the same as my opinion of Thanos with the Power Stone, where he doesn't really need it. He has two stones already, so he's pretty happy for power most of the time. I think if you are taking a stone on him that's meant to give him power just for that extra power consistency, you'd be better off with the power stone on Thanos specifically um, just because four is that kind of consistent number for you and five isn't really any better than four is. 
So the soul stones kind of overall value is most likely a little bit less on, on Mr. Thanos here. The next stone is probably, in my opinion, either the best or the second best stone. Um, and this is the space stone. So the space stone is giving you an active superpower that's going to cost you two to use, kind of like the mind stone in this regard. And it says choose this character or another allied character within range three and place it within range two of its current position. This superpower can be used only once per turn. So this is really, really solid. This is a great way to move yourself or some of your teammates up the board. Doesn't care about the size of your teammates, so really, really nice as well if you can like put this on someone who's, I don't know, helping bring something like a Hulk around the board with them. Really, really solid right there. And yeah, it's in general just a really, really powerful and versatile stone to have. The characters that can use this include Ebony Maw, Loki, and Thanos, notably all characters who were also able to wield the Mind Stone, and I'm pretty sure in the case of all three, I actually prefer the Space Stone on them. Uh, a lot of the time when Thanos is being run in Black Order, for example, he will be run with the Space Mind Stone, but sometimes people like to free up one of those stones for Ebony Maw and give Thanos something else. Uh, and in those cases, I do definitely think Ebony Maw prefers the Space Stone. He has no mobility in his own kit, and the Space Stone gives you the power to be able to use it um, on, like, on its own, basically. So Ebony Maw, who's already starting with three power, the Space Stone means he's going to be starting with four. So once again, it gives him access to all the same things we talked about with the Mind Stone, but it also gives him that extra little bit of mobility if he needs it, which is definitely really, really nice for him. Uh, with range four attacks, it can it can secure you some some turn one attacks and things like that, which can be really, really big. So yeah, I, I quite like it on Ebony Maw. Similarly with Loki, I think it's great for getting him up the board, getting him nice and close to be able to do some of the things he needs to do. Uh, notably, his main builder attack is only a range two, so he definitely appreciates being able to get closer for that from, from time to time. And then, uh, again, just bringing that God of Mischief aura around with you is really, really nice. Once Loki's kind of in position, he's where he wants to be, it's a great way you can kind of manipulate some of the other models on your board. And this is true of Ebony Maw as well, so I think it's really nice for both of them. For Thanos, I think Space Stone is the other stone you see him splashed with all the time. Uh, it's also played on him in his home affiliation. If you're, if, if they're not planning on playing Ebony Maw, a lot of the time Thanos has the Space and the Mind Stones in his own affiliation. And then when he's being splashed, it'll be Space and Reality Stones. And yeah, I think there's there's a lot of great reasons for that. I mean, the Space Stone combined with Cosmic Portal is really, really good. It allows him to teleport himself up the board. And I didn't mention this on the Mind Stone, but Thanos is allowed to do these superpowers uh, from the Infinity Stones without paying their cost. That's just specifically a Thanos thing. So it allows him to teleport up the board, still have three power from the, from the two stones that he has. And so he places himself, he drags an enemy in, he punches them, and as long as he builds even one power on that punch, uh, he's going to be able to use his Cosmic Portal and... Uh, or not Cosmic Portal, his his Death's Decree to uh, bolster your, your allies' attacks later that round. So really, really strong stone with him, gives you a lot of different things you can kind of manipulate, and yeah, just in general, really, really powerful um, stone to have on any character, but it's especially the three that it is legal for, uh, all of them really, really appreciate its effects. The last stone we're going to be looking at is the Time Gem. Now, this one is unique from the other stones in the fact that it gives you a reactive ability instead of a passive or an active superpower. Uh, so this reactive superpower is a two-cost superpower as well. And it says when this character is attacking before the calculate success or failure step at the end of the modified dice step of the attack. So this is after you've done your normal rerolls and after your opponent's done their rerolls or any pierces or anything like that has happened. The attacking and defending characters reroll all of their attack and defense dice, including skull results. So this stone is allowed on a handful of characters here, and it's really interesting with a couple of them, and in my opinion, kind of useless on the other two. So we're going to start out by talking about Corvus here, and the unfortunate reality of the situation with Corvus, no pun intended, is that the reality stone is just much better. Um, time stone is almost actively bad for him in some cases. Uh, like I mentioned, it's after all of the dice mods have happened, so it kind of loses the pierce ability on his basic strike, which isn't great. 
Um, it does give him the ability to reroll skulls when he's not counting them as crits, so I guess that's fine, and it can help you fish for that flurry trigger, and when you're counting blanks, again, that, that can be really nice as well. Oh, you rolled, you know, a few too many shields and skulls, being able to full reroll is certainly nice there. Still appreciates the power. I think in a world where he couldn't have the reality gem, it's probably solid on him, but I think the reality gem is just so many leagues better than the time gem for Mr. Corvus here, so unfortunately... Um, it's not great for him just because he has a much better option available for him. The next character it's available for is Doctor Strange, and we did mention this when we were talking about Doctor Strange, but unfortunately the time stone on Strange is a little bit redundant. Um, he happens to already have the Eye of Agamotto attack, which allows him to modify and reroll skulls already, and it gives him a full reroll on his attack or defense dice once per attack. So he's already kind of got that chance to re-roll the dice. It can still be nice for him if you, especially if you really want to fish for that Mystic Binding trigger. Uh, so you know maybe you full re-roll, you still didn't get it, so you can try again. Definitely a nice thing to to have available, but I don't know if it's worth a full threat for him. Um, certainly something you you're welcome to try playing around with and form your own opinion on, but it's probably not the greatest for him. As I mentioned earlier, when I was running Strange with a Stone. I personally preferred the Soul Stone over the Time Stone for him, because he does also have to pay that 2 power for the rerolls, and that doesn't feel amazing for him, because he's not the most power wealthy character in the world, so it, it can be a little bit awkward for him. The next character is actually unreleased at the time of recording. He might actually be out by the time this video goes up. I'm a little bit ahead on this series. But we have Namor, who has been revealed to be a gem bearer for the Time Stone, which is really, really exciting because they haven't actually printed a new gem bearer in a while. So it's great to see that they're doing that. And I think people are really, really off and on about whether or not the Time Stone is going to be good on Namor. So I'm really interested to see where kind of people land on this. But I do definitely see the value in it. Partially just that that third power for, for him is really, really big. Starting with a third power on his turn, he's going to be able to do his charge right from round one, which is really, really good. We've seen this with characters like Thor that have three cost charges and actually the exact same charge pretty much. Um, very, very nice effect to have uh, available round one definitely going to be something he appreciates it also gives him access to the spender round one which i don't know how often that's actually going to come up because the spender is only range two so it might happen once in a while because i think he's a medium base with a long move so he is going to be able to hit the midline with his spender technically uh if he if he so chooses um so that's definitely worth acknowledging but i think the big thing is that it will be giving you that 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 uh, charge attack round one and then in future rounds it will help you do things like the spender more often so that's definitely nice as well um yeah it's it's probably solid for him for that reason as far as the rerolls go i think it's fine for him he already has a a single die reroll from his charismatic leader uh superpower here so it's going to be a little redundant with that because you're going to reroll the one die and then you'll you'll full reroll after that which is not amazing because you, you've now kind of wasted your single reroll but you're not allowed to do it in the other order because of the way the time stone works so still nice to have i mean just as an optional extra consistency thing but i think more often than not you're probably going to prefer not to actually use the time stone you're mostly just taking it for the extra power which does bring up the question of is it worth a full threat at that point and honestly, the answer, in my opinion, is maybe. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to play around with him uh, once once he's available because, yeah, I'm not 100% sure, but I definitely think there is some merit to the argument, and I'm glad to see a, a new character come out where there's actually a discussion about whether or not you, you run him with the stone because that's, that's always fun to see, and I think it's an interesting decision point. And the last character is, once again, Thanos. And at this point, I think we've kind of ironed out which Thanos' favorite stones are. He likes the space and the mind stones when he's in his home affiliation. He likes space and reality when he's out of them. But if he is giving up any of his stones to anybody else on his team, I do think the time stone is a very, very valid next choice for him. Um, I I had a, a local player or I, I say local but I, I saw him at local tournaments he wasn't actually a part of my my local game store um, but there there was a player who I played many games against 
uh, who plays a lot of Black Order, and he really enjoyed the Time Stone on Thanos just for that extra bit of consistency. Because Thanos can use it for free, uh, having that full reroll on the strikes and the, and the Cosmic Blast attacks, especially when you're getting up to 8 dice with the Cosmic Blast attack, can be really, really nice. Um, definitely a great way to get a little bit of extra consistency, even if you're just like fishing for those wild throws. Uh, you know, there, there's a really, really solid chance if you didn't get it on the first six dice, you can just throw them again and get it on the second one. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely understand the, the value of it with him there. I do think out of all the stones, it's probably his fourth favorite stone, but it is still really useful on him and definitely worth considering, especially if you do want to be able to pass one of your other stones to someone like Ebony Maw or, or, or someone like that. So yeah, I certainly like the like the time stone on him um i just think most of the time it probably is taking second or third place to some of the other stones available and uh yeah unfortunately that just means he doesn't see too much play with it but i do think it's very very solid and i definitely do recommend trying it out if you've been playing thanos and you're finding he's a little inconsistent sometimes with his his own attacks um that can definitely help kind of even that out for you yeah, that is going to just about do it for this kind of, again, character is the wrong word, but character spotlight uh, video. I thought this would be an interesting way to kind of mix things up a little bit for this series and talk about the kind of equipment items in the game. And I think it would be really, really cool if we see them do more with this sort of thing, because I do think the stones are really, really neat. And seeing that they have decided to add a, a stone to a newer release is really really exciting for me it means that they have not forgotten that these things exist and i'm hoping that they'll do more with them in the future and maybe we'll even start to see other types of equipment my locals and i have talked a lot about maybe the ability to equip i don't know mjolnir to someone or or something like that uh you know captain america can wield mjolnir and it gives him either like four asgard or maybe even just thor's hammer throw or something like that could be really interesting really fun so i'd love to see some more things like the stones kind of come into the game at some point uh definitely something i i would look forward to if that were to be announced but obviously that's that's just all all things that i'm i'm hoping for not nothing actually revealed or, or even or even leaked or anything like that so all just things that i would like to see because i think the stones are really really cool and they can provide some really fun kind of shakeups to some of the ways that some of these characters currently play so yeah, let me know if I missed anything, if there's any characters that really appreciate the stones or maybe characters with a stone that go really well in a certain affiliation or something like that that I didn't mention here. Very curious to hear what you guys think, which stones you guys like to bring on which characters. Definitely want to hear all of your guys' thoughts on this. But that is going to do it for me for this character spotlight. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do drop a like down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We do character spotlights and things like that every week on the weekdays. And then on the weekends, we have battle reports and things like that. So if you're a fan of any of those sorts of things, feel free to join on in. But that's going to be all for me for this video here. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Peace.